the sister, uh, as we were promoting the show, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the sister uh, inboxed me about a book that she wrote. Okay. And I said, I said, sure, I'll read the book. You know, send me the book. Not knowing, not knowing anything about the book. Not knowing too much, I kind of you know spied on her a little, you know, uh, you know, I, I you know I, I looked on you know some social media stuff and I googled and I, I watched some of her previous interviews, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, I made a few phone calls and uh, I you know I heard some good things about her, right? Mm -hmm. And so you did your, you did your research. I did my I did my I did my professional and I did my street research. Okay. 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 <laughs> Right? And um, I was very interested because before I even started, you know, it was like, I know that she was credible. Mm -hmm. And the person being credible is important to the authenticity yeah. of the show. And so once I did that research and found out she was credible, you know, I'm like, send me the book and I look up a couple days later and the book is there in the office. Like I'm like, oh wow, mm. she's serious. That that showed me something yeah. else. Yeah. She's serious. And I started reading the book. And I, I can actually read it over. Mm -hmm. So Royalty Publishing presents. And it's funny because I, I was pronouncing the book almost halfway through. I was forgetting the E <laughs> at the end of my head for Roman. Because I'm like, where my mind is at, I'm like, Harlem oh, heroin, right? But it's Harlem heroin. And uh, we have with us somebody who uh, has endured, who's been through the ups and downs mm -hmm. of life, who has had near-death life experiences, who's been, you know, through the, the, the good times mm -hmm. and the bad times, who is still here to tell her story, right? And I give you Miss T. Miss T. <laughs> so, I am, I'm amazed with you. Uh, you are a miracle. You are an inspiration, a blessing. And the way you told your story, so. I gotta before we before we get into it, and this is kind of why we're doing interviews like this. I get a text about twelve thirty in the morning mm -hmm. from a friend of mine about my best friend, childhood friend. I'm the godfather to his young children. He's been in prison for twenty seven years mm -hmm. for the Godfather three shooting mm -hmm. out here in Queens, and, mm -hmm. you know, Christmas Day twenty seven years ago, right? And so he's a big part of my life, we talk all the time. So somebody texted me about this newspaper article that was in Newsday yesterday about the class action lawsuit that him and other lifers have up in Otisville and Sing Sing against the parole board. So I wake up and I read it. Me and him are planning a show around his, okay. around his, whole, his whole thing that's going okay. on. And it's about young men who were sentenced as teenagers and now they're adults in their mid forties, and when they go to parole, they're not being looked at as new people, mm -hmm. right? They're not being judged based on where they are as men. Right. And so, I was thinking about Miss T coming. I, I, I couldn't really sleep last night. I'm thinking about the interview and the right questions, and I said, "Oh, now I get it." It's important for us to tell our story. Right. It's important for us to nar to narrate the story about how cleverly she wrote about the people in her life, uh, misconceptions that people had about those people. Mm -hmm. Even with the other sides to some of them, and we're gonna get into all of it some of the bad things, right. some of the people who were considered monsters. Mm -hmm. You said, no, I'm going to personalize mm -hmm. these people and tell you about the person mm -hmm. that I am. Uncut. And, and that's what we're going to do today, and that's what I'm going to do with 
with, with Lawrence, Jocelyn, Bartley. We just want to say we love you. You know, we, we're going to be here fighting for you. And it's important for us to tell our stories. So, getting into your story. <laughs> let's let's just start with how how are you today? How are you doing? I'm good. I am great. God is good, mm -hmm. and um, I really appreciate you guys inviting me here. Yeah. We, we we appreciate yeah. you coming too. So yeah, everything is good. Everything is good. Yes. Yeah. I can't complain. I won't complain. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So where were you born? You were born in Harlem. Yes. Okay. Yeah, born and raised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where about in Harlem? Um, 133rd and 7th Avenue, um, okay, okay. you know, that's where I was living at. I was born in Flower 5th Avenue, mm -hmm. now called Mount Sinai. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, I was born and raised there. I was on 133rd and 7th Avenue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, growing up, back in those days, it was fun. Fun, you know, living around certain people and seeing certain things. Right. And um, that's what all it was to me, it was fun. Mm. You know, a lot of love. A lot yeah. Of love. Oh, definitely. Very family orientated. You know, amongst the people that you know, we all you know, the, uh, very different from how it is now. Yeah. If you need you some know. sugar, you can get some. Oh yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> like, Miss Johnson, up the everybody ball. watched everybody's kids. Mm. Like we were all family. You know. Harlem was always like that. Like for some reason, like yeah. you could like Harlem is this. It's totally different from all the other boroughs like Brooklyn and Queens. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, Harlem's definitely different. And I also think as far as like, but people being together, looking out for each other, right. I think that was similar kind of everywhere in a sense. But, but, but Harlem always had a different feel mm -hmm. when you went there. Always a different feel. Yeah. But now, pre-crack era, it was a lot of unity. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you know, there was a lot of unity amongst everybody. Mm -hmm. There was, mm -hmm. there was camaraderie. People looked out for each other. Yeah. You know, so you figure that's like the seventies when you was a child. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, seventies, yeah, early okay. eighties, yeah. Right, right. Hip hop's bursting on the scene. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. and, and and so you you had a uh, you had a, your father's from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And, and, and your mother's African American. So mm -hmm. what was that like? That's a, com that's a real combination. <laughs> Especially yeah. back in those days, yeah. you didn't hear that too much. My mom, she's a Southern Belle. Mm. Um, like From the South? Yeah, Alabama. The wow. sweetest person. When I say everybody loves her, some people are like, uh, she gave birth to you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely my father's child probably. But yeah. Right. Um, I guess it was, you know, like I said, I mean, I asked him, you know, how did they meet? And, uh, you know, they met on the train and he never let her go. But yeah, it was interesting because, like I said, my mama, my mother's a Southern Belle. Mm -hmm. She's um, just sweet. Now, of course, my, when you think of Jamaican, you think of strict. Right, yeah. And that's how it was, you know. My mother, she didn't punish us. She didn't, you know, she didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, my dad, on the other hand, you know, like I said, he spent a lot of time away. But when he was home, you know, I got into a trouble quite, you know, often for just doing crazy things or whatever. Mm. Was there all the siblings as well? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was uh, three girls, three girls. Um, and he had business in Jamaica, so he used to travel back and forth. Yeah, he did a lot. He always um, came home, packed those big barrels to shit down. Oh, okay. Clothes, food, jewelry. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and he had a chicken farm down there, so he did a lot of business with that. Right. And it's so crazy because I found out a lot about my dad and his business after his death. I really didn't know how big he was wow. out in Jamaica to people. He okay. went a lot. Wow. Yeah, and I learned a lot from my uncle, his brother, and I also learned a lot once my grandfather died. He was 93 years old. He died mm -hmm. in 2010. And me and my sister went down, and I realized, like, wow, my father... You know, although he had already been dead since 2003. Okay. So in 2010, when my grandfather died, me and my sister went there now, just looking like, okay, mm -hmm. my father definitely meant a lot to a lot of people down here. So yeah. none of you guys, none of you, you, your sisters, y'all had no idea? Not really. Now, my brother, Mike, is my brother is from another mom, but okay. we're close. We grew up like that, you mm -hmm. know. Um, he traveled a lot to Jamaica with my dad when he was growing up. 
but me and my sister really had no idea, you know, because people was coming up to us saying, are you Tanya and you Sean? And it scared us. Because mm. it was like scary looking men, and we looking at each other like, how do you know us? Right. Like, who wow. are these people, you know? And, um, to you know, I guess us, y'all. I guess so, and, you know, us being Americans, you know, I guess my grandfather dying, people coming out to see who's coming to Jamaica for this trip, yeah. and all yeah. the family members and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was, um, and it was a good feeling, you know, mm-hmm. that people loved my dad like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because he played a big impact yeah. in your in yeah. your life as I read through your story. Yeah. So 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 your so your upbringing around that time, what was it like? You know, you're going to school, you're mm-hmm. doing the right thing. You know, mom, mom and dad, mom was kind of stay home. No, no, mom, she, so she she worked in a nursing home. She okay. Worked, yeah, since like late sixties, I think. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Seventy, something like that. Yeah, she was um working in a nursing home. So she worked a lot, okay. and she spent a lot of time outside the house. Mm-hmm. And of course, my dad being back and forth to Jamaica a lot, that gave way to me just um, mm-hmm. wanting to know more about the streets. Mm-hmm. And um, I love to dress. I love money. Yeah, that was the thing. About so home. yeah, so home you know, like that. okay, and Still I had a aunt that I wanted to be like. You know, she was beautiful, mm-hmm. and um, she loved to dress. She worked in a bar, so I don't, you know, if you look at the old movies and see how they was in the bars, yeah, the bars yeah, was yeah, the, yeah, you know, what dressed up, dressing, mm-hmm. and that's where all the people or the um, dealers hung out, right? Who got had money, mm-hmm. you know, Mickey Barnes and different people who yeah. you know uh, was in Harlem. So you know, when he was away and mom was working, I just was like, okay. You know, I like this. <laughs> so, so what was your initial attraction to, I like to ask people who were in the streets like me, what was the initial attraction like? What what was it? What was those moments like when you was like, I want to be out there in it? Was it one particular thing? I don't think so. I think it was just the people. It was just a feel in Harlem. Like, I, I think I described it as Harlem was the stage. Mm, okay. And it was just lights, cameras, action. It was just mm. like... It was the stage, and I just wanted to be on stage. And at stage. that point, how old were you at that point? I was kind of young. I was young. Mm-hmm. Coming up, yeah. In your teens? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. At, 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 around that time, yeah. was your sisters feeling the same way? Where well, you to get my older with? sister, actually, one of my older sisters, she grew up in, she grew up down south, so she didn't really come up here until she was a little older. Okay. Janine. And my sister, she, so if I was like 14, she was only really like eight at the time, mm-hmm. the youngest one. That's the one in the book who I took every day. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I guess she kind of grew up like watching me, following me, you know, around. Okay. So, yeah, that's how it was. But she yeah, was, um, and like I said, um, growing up in 133rd, I grew up with like Kim Fields Kim and, Fields. you know, different people. Right. We all live in the same building, same block. Mm-hmm. So, um. Yeah, it was just always something. Something going on. Something, something going on. Yeah. 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 A lot of life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember my experiences going up there as a teenager when I was first taken out there with some of the older guys I was hanging with, and it's like one, two in the morning. I'm like, this is one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, it was people. It was kids yeah. Yeah. outside. And it was like, you know, little kids. And I'm like, are you serious? This is normal for, for, for Oh my um, goodness, it was I, crazy. I used to just hang out there, to go out in the village. I mean, I used to like buying clothes in Harlem. For some reason, they regular, typical yeah. Dr. J's is yeah. different from because you know go Dr. J's. Yeah, but you could go and get something that wasn't necessarily on the avenue. Exactly. Exactly. Even you know, the even shirts had a lot of nice stuff, but still. They, they would get the stuff first. They would get the stuff first. Yeah, yeah. All of all always had it. You know, it's like, like, like you said, like when it comes to like the gear, the dressing. You know, all of always had it. Mm-hmm. Two of the lot, two of the most liveliest places that that I hung out in and really had the most fun was Harlem and East New York. Now, East East New York was much more dangerous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, but my sister lived in East New York, and I spent a lot of time over there. Right. You know, listen, Van Sicklin, Van New Lots and Livonia, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> New Lots and Livonia? But I, I would ride my bike from Queens. 
out there because it was just so much fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was tough. It was tough. So we're gonna start getting into your story and the relationships and the men mm -hmm. because men are a big part of your story. Right. Right. You know, not all of them. I'm just gonna name. You know the, the general crew, and not all of you dated. Some people were just men in your life. Yeah. Wow, how wow, big stand was your okay. uncle, yeah. uh, Ace, Lil Main, Fritz, Lou, mm -hmm. Donald, and, uh, and, and and a few more other people. We're gonna, I'm gonna try to do what I can because there's so much in your book. Yeah, it's a lot. And I I wanna do, I wanna do your story justice. So I really. <laughs> really want to and I want to give you a chance and an opportunity to really really explain so talking about personal relationships and you know I kind of want to start with Lou mm -hmm. you and Lou were together for a while y'all loved each other how did y'all meet? I actually knew Lou from I remember him from the age of six or seven because okay. I had a cousin older cousin Ronnie that he used to run around with but then there was a time when so much time passed I hadn't seen him okay. growing up. So um, at, I think I was like 18 or 19, 19 I believe, um, I happened to see him in Harlem mm -hmm. and I knew it was him. And um, from then, he, we kind of sought each other out in a sense mm -hmm. and our relationship started. Started, okay. Yeah. So, so he was obviously was, was in the streets doing some things. Yeah. Uh, you know, Lou Sims, you know, from 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 what he's considered to be from the lynch mall mm -hmm. in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Um you and him, how did it start to get serious? What began to happen? Um I I was in a relationship previous to that, but he went away. Mm -hmm. Um so I guess, you know, it really started pretty quick. You okay. know, we seen each other that day, passing by, he was riding by. And then I guess not too long ago after that, we started talking and then a relationship, because at the time I wasn't really, although my friend was away, I wasn't really dating anyone else. Okay. So the relationship between us kind of started rather quickly and just built from there. And who was that that went away? Uh, um, his name is Dog. Dog. We call him Dog. Now when you say away, was he incarcerated? Yeah, or? fed time. Okay. He had one away, actually I think of Okay. Yeah, 88 and um, you know, I was young and you know, five years back then to a teenager was like, oh, he's never coming home, you know, <laughs> five years was a long time to me and it, I think that was the first person I was with that actually went to jail. So was there, was there an initial breakup with you guys or you guys was really still together? Yeah, kind of, sort of, yeah. Because I was while? visiting him up at Otisville, okay. yeah, in a fed, uh, federal um, penitentiary up in the uh, Otisville. So yeah, I was visiting him time to time. Mm -hmm. But um, then I guess once I got with Lou, it kind of like, you know, the visits kind of stopped. Right. You know, I would still accept his phone calls. Um, I mentioned that. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> I think you mentioned somewhere that uh, that he called you and, and you were there yeah. with, with Lou? Yeah. In, in the, y'all were like, in the bed. In the bed. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you missed your two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was nice. You still gave me the phone. You know, you gave time. I mean, that's cool. I mean, at least you picked up. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, you know, it's like, people are human beings, right? And everybody has a life and everybody has needs. And it's funny because when, when I was away, I, I used to hear guys say certain stuff that to me like didn't make sense. Like they would be like, yo, that that B I T C H better not be cheating on me. And I'd be like, yo, dog, what did you get sentenced to? You know, like, like, yeah. like listen, she's coming to visit you, she's putting money in your commissary, she's bringing you clothes. Don't you think you're asking for a bit I much? Mean, I mean, you know, she, she's a human being. You know, that's like when, you know, I had a sister that I was dating. You know, we was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, she planned on moving on. Instead of college, she planned on moving on to the army. Right. All right? I actually thought I was still with her, you okay. know? Um, 
wrote her letters, sent her gifts <laughs> wherever she was stationed. Oh wow! And um, I felt like I was still in this relationship, you mm-hmm. know. And so one day she came back here to visit our parents, and um, long story short, we met and um, we had dinner, and then she was like, "Look, you know, I don't feel the same way anymore." Wow. You know, so I felt, I felt crushed. So the time and space changes. The time and space changes. Yeah. It does change. You know, um, yeah. and, and I can respect that. Yeah. Especially when you're young, you know. We all probably thought we was in love at mm-hmm. one time, but it was more like lust. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it, 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 it takes time for us to really know. When you're really in love with somebody, right. you know. Right. Then you realize how different it was from whatever past relationships that you had. And I ain't mad at you, Ms. T. Yeah. I ain't what, mad at what, you. What attracted you to Lou? Um, he was somewhat charming, nice looking, mm-hmm. and um, just knowing that he was kind of like a part of my family at one time, mm-hmm. you know, because he was close with my cousin. Okay. You know, it wasn't really that he was, um, a bad way because I didn't know as much when we first started dating. But you knew yeah. he had swag. You know, well, he, oh yeah, you know he had that. some street cred. Yeah, you, you kind of knew generally. I knew people. he was the one that knew not to mess with not him. Not to be played with. I did remember that. Yeah, did that attract you? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were young. Yeah. You were young, so I'm, I'm yeah. like, like I mean, he was a street dude. Okay. So. He wasn't street. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't go to Harvard and right. you know and, 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 and wear suits no. every day, right, you know. Right. So 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 you were kind of so attracted to the bad boy, right? Kind so of thing. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's more straight to what's going on now. Like a lot of the, right. a lot of the women sisters is more attracted to the bad boys. You know, the nice guys. They ain't get no love. So what? So what kind of comes with that? So so you 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 with Lou mm-hmm. and how is Things going? Is he doing things for you? Is he spending money on you and taking you out? You know, like what kind of money is he giving? Well, he would spend money. We would um, go out here and there because mm-hmm. um, he was, you know, doing his thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you he was, travel and stuff like that. He and I know we never really traveled anywhere. Mm-hmm. I think no even like to the Pokemon's or something, did stuff like that. Right, right, like, right. Because I, I, I see y'all in pictures and yeah. he having fun and yeah. things like that. <laughs> Yeah, we did stuff like that. And, you know, he was just a cool guy. Funny, you know, liked to joke around and have fun. Okay. You know, but a lot of people didn't know him like that. Mm. They knew him as being dangerous, um, probably unapproachable, okay. uh, probably someone who was always serious. <clears throat> but I seen something different. You know, my whole family, we just seen something different. Oh, so your family accepted him? Oh, but well, he actually my knew um, my aunt, my cousin, who he used to run around with. He knew my aunt. Okay. To her. So, you know, because it's so crazy. He would tell me stories about her stuff that he remembered. She mm-hmm. was the one who was in the bars. And, you know, he was around when she was with dudes driving Cadillacs and stuff like that. So, you know, okay. he would tell me old stories. Yeah, so. But, you know, he... He, he, he was a good person. Did he always do good things? No. And I guess that's, you know, part of, I guess, whatever he was into, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You talked about uh, having drama with other girls because he would, he would sleep around, he was messing with other girls. Yeah, you know, when you're young, it, you know, well, me, I am, um, if I need to find something out, I'm gonna find it out. Okay. Number one. But then you also have it where females want you to know. They're gonna tell you because mm-hmm. you know it is what it is. He's doing him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I found out that he was the well. I, you know, when we got together, he was in a relationship somewhat. Didn't mm-hmm. really know too much about it, but I knew something because he did say it. Okay. But I was young at the time, so I really didn't care. I wasn't thinking of stuff like that. I wasn't thinking of me. Him dealing with me possibly hurting another woman. Right. I was so, a teenager. So, so he had a mean, he had a mean girl. He knew he yeah. had a mean girl. Yeah. But you know he's. The and she lived somewhere else, not even in the city. Right. Yeah, somewhere else. So you know. Mm-hmm. Did he have any children with her? I think she was having. I think she was having a baby. 
Okay. Time. She's yeah. pregnant. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. But okay. he already had like an older daughter, you know. <clears throat> so what was the so what was the mindset? Oh, so he already had one. Yeah. Older. So okay. what was the mindset around? Okay, I know he he has somebody else, but he can still be mine. What was the thinking that was you willing to willing to settle because he was loose ends? Or no, because to me, I wasn't looking at him like he was loose ends. Okay. You know, like some people, you know, I wasn't looking at it like that. Um. She, I was here and she was somewhere. Gotcha. I don't know where. Out of sight, out of mind. Right, right. Okay. And I'm usually, if I want something, I'm going to get it. Mm -hmm. If I need you to stay this way, you're going to be. Mm -hmm. And I've been and like you that. Him. Right. Right. And I'm, okay. you know, so I thought, like, okay, I'll do what I need to do and he's not going nowhere. Gotcha. You know, that's my mindset as a young, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's mm -hmm. good for that, having a confidence. That's, that's, oh, that's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. So, so now he's running around, mm -hmm. you find out he's cheating. Yeah. There's an incident in the book mm -hmm. where you kind of went to kind of track him down. And you see he was with another girl someplace else. I think it was really like in the Bronx or something like that. Or I, I might be getting Oh, no, you get him mixed up with you. I'm getting him mixed up with you. Okay, okay. I'm oh, sorry, I don't get to you. So, yeah, yeah, we got to get to you. Okay. Okay. So much. Okay, so. Yeah. See, I know you had some things with Lou right, as thing, far as the physical violence. Well, that was because a female happened to call me up and said, oh, he's with this girl uptown. Somebody told me different than the first girl. Okay. So when I confronted him and said I was leaving him and they wanted nothing to do with him, he kind of like, you know, I guess that was something he wasn't ready for one of the head. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he I guess that got him to a point where he kind of, like I say in the book, I think he blacked out. Other than that, we never really had physical violence, but at that moment, he blacked out, and I was like, oh, okay, like, he's, he, I don't think he really realized what he's doing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. at that time. Did you kind of see another side of him in, in that moment? Did it kind yeah, of show definitely, because I was like, okay. Maybe I'm some of the things people are saying about him could be true. Right, and that came, you know, that was all in that and came later. And the reason, like, our breakup wasn't really about women. It was that as well as, you know, things that people were saying. Okay, street, okay. You mm -hmm. know, and I'm looking like, what is going on? You know, what are they saying, what are they saying? that he was... Anybody that was getting killed or whatever, they wanted to blame on him. He wasn't doing all of that, because like I mentioned in the book, um, when Rich Porter got killed, they called my house and I got threatened. Mm -hmm. You know, they said, oh, we know he did it, so we're going to kill you, they're going to find you in the river. So I'm like, this, I know he didn't have nothing to do with that, you know. So but, it was assuming, being that mm -hmm. the word was out that Lou was catching so many bodies, right. killing so many they people that everybody. everybody that was getting killed, on they him. put on him. Oh, yeah. okay. So I'm like, and the whole reporter situation was something totally, totally different. Totally different as everybody found out later on. Right. You mm -hmm. know, that was a sad situation. Right. But yeah. Um, Did you know Rich? I knew Rich. I met Rich from um, a guy I was dating in like 85, 86. Him and Rich were real tight. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know him personally mm -hmm. to say like I knew Rich Porter no but I met him what? he seemed to be a very nice guy okay and he was like I said he was really really close to an ex of mine so um was he like the what was was him in, 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 in real life as much as the the legend <laughs> as it is grown into you know <laughs> he was that guy that a lot of guys in Harlem probably wanted to be like okay. I would say that he was fly he was flashy. Yeah, had everything everybody wanted. He was, right, getting money. Um, he wasn't the connect. Right. You know, but right. he was doing things that, you know, people wanted. He made the game look good. He made the game look good, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There's exactly. guys that make the game look yeah. good. Yep. There's guys that are the connect, that right. are behind all of it. Right. right. But some people just know how to wear the game. Yeah. And once they were, <laughs> once they like that, everybody won't want to be like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and he did that. Yeah. Yeah. Some people look like yeah. they connect, but they're not. But right. I, I, you know what? And, and thinking back on all the people that I've known and all that, I don't know if 
it was so much that they were maybe trying to look like to connect. There were some people that was just authentically fly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I had right. friends that they were just fly. That's it. Yeah. That, that's, that's just, that's just, that's just basically And him. that was his thing. He had style, he had swag yeah. before we even started using swag. Like he had all that. Yeah, there was guys like that from when yeah. we was in public school. They right. just knew how to put that together, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, they just knew how to dress yep. even before the so right. so yeah, yeah man. Yeah. So so now you and Lou, you you, you kind of break off. Um, well, actually, I met my daughter's father. Ace. I was still with Lou. You were still okay. with Lou. But it was kind of like rocky. Mm-hmm. Y'all was going through some issues. Right. So um, I started going down to my 12th sheet with a girlfriend of mine, and um, I met Fritz. Mm-hmm. You know, Fritz was the connect. Mm-hmm. Okay. At one time, no one asked him, just made him home. Mm-hmm. And um, I seen his partner in the house one day. You know, we were just going down there um, to see Fritz, get a couple of dollars. Um, and, you know, Fritz was like, oh, somebody like you. I was like, yeah, I know who it is, because, you know, when you see somebody, you know, somebody give you a look, you already know right. what it is. Right. So, um, one day, Ace was waiting downstairs on his motorcycle. And me and he and I started talking or whatever. And he gave me his phone number because he had like one of the first cell phones. That yeah, was like that's the big, the big phone. <laughs> <story. laughs> <laughs> I gave my people number because I had a people. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we just started talking. We were just friends. He would talk to me about his children and what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing happened between us, but he started giving me a lot of money. Mm. So, um... Like how much? Like, ooh, yeah, a lot of money. Like, I would say I need to pay my college tuition. Wow, wow. Right. But I was... That wasn't true. I had financial aid. <laughs> right. But I had name, though. I had yeah. name. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, he was very busy in the street. Mm-hmm. So I guess to compensate for his time, he would give me wads of money. But that worked for me because I really didn't have time because I had a man, a dangerous man at that. Right. right. So it worked out, you know, us right. passing, you know, he would come, you know, he was And you're trying to keep maybe them from oh, definitely. finding out so at that, at that about time, each other. Oh, no. Okay. But it came a point where I was shopping, I was buying little diamond name chains and earrings and buying all kind of stuff. And Lou was right. like, now I always dressed, but Lou was like, mm, this ain't looking, nah, Miss I, which is my mother, I didn't give you all that money. Right. You ain't, mm-mm. I'm like, my mother giving me this money, uh-uh. Mm-hmm. So it had to come, you know, then I would, you know, buy him a couple of things. You yeah, know, yeah, you talked about stuff. that. I, I, like that. I was yeah. laughing about that because yeah. she would use, she would use some, some of the money she was getting from Gates to buy loose stuff. Right. So it was sort of like, he like, hit off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, he like, well, she's giving me money, smart. but she's spending it on me, so what the hell? Mm-hmm. Mm. But then it had to come to a point where I was like, no, I'm getting it from this guy. I ain't doing nothing, you know. Right. Um, right. 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 <laughs> nothing's going on. Right. 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 He just liked me. And it really wasn't. It wasn't. Nothing was going That's on. That's amazing. Yeah. And he just had it like that. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah. That's the type of money that was yeah. famous making. Yeah. Yeah. Ace and Fritz, man. He was, oh my goodness. So what made you get with Ace instead of Fritz? Like, was, was you kind of feeling Fritz like. Nah, never. No? He was more like an uncle. Okay. Yeah, okay. I did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, nah, he was more like an uncle. Like gotcha. he, was, he was just a really nice guy. He mm-hmm. would give me and my girlfriend money to rent buses to get free bus rides and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think time was, time like, went on at that point. So at that point, what t- how old were you then? Um, you were still in your teens. Yeah, like teens. 19. 19. Yeah, 19. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, nah, Fritz was just a cool guy. Okay. You know, and, um, yeah, so, you know, me and, things, like I said, things were rocky, and it had to come, came to a point where, okay, I was, like, kind of, like, done with Lou. Mm-hmm. But, see, I was never, ever at a point where, okay, I'm going to be with him to make Lou jealous. Even at an early age, I knew I couldn't play a dangerous game like that. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um... So, but then I knew, okay, yeah, he's dangerous, but they got power. Gosh, Money is power. Mm-hmm. Lou's so, dangerous, but they got power. Yeah, got yeah. power. Yeah. So one kind of can offset the other. Yes, it can. Where if you make can. a decision to right. be with Ace, yeah. 
Yeah. Lou, Lou knows. Yeah. I can't mess up homes. I, 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 I can't mess around. You know, and then at the end of the day, when it was all said and done, power respect power. Yes, Everybody fine. have a mutual understanding without even saying words. Right. And it is what it is. If I'm like done with this, because you already got some things going on anyway. Okay. It's like you can't really come and argue with me if I want to go over here. Right. And that's, well, interest, that's interesting how smart. And you didn't want women and stuff. And you were young. Yeah. That's interesting. You, you, I mean, your older sister was around throughout this whole thing. My oldest, she, she's southern, so she wasn't really street at all. Mm, okay. You know, whatever I did was all. So you ain't get no help in terms nah. of how you thought. Mm -mm. Your thought process was to the next level. She was figuring it out. She was going along. Yeah. She was learning on hand. <laughs> right. Mm, interesting. And learning from the best. Because see, you gotta, you gotta understand that. When you're around, these guys are great thinkers. Yeah. These guys, you know, Fritz, Rich, Porter, yeah, yeah. They're from the streets, Lou, man. man. Right, Ace, go on it. I mean, we could be here all night just talking about how, right? Mm -hmm. But these guys were were brilliant mm -hmm. because it takes a lot yeah. to manage all of that. Right. And when you're around that. Your influence, mm -hmm. just in the conversations, just how I think back about conversations that I had. I'm going to do a, a thing, Conversations with the Dead, right? Conversations with Malik, Conversations with the Dead. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the lessons that I learned, mm -hmm. I learned from people that are no longer here. Okay. But just general conversations. Mm -hmm. When we would just be riding somewhere. Right. And the way that they thought and looked at things and how they reasoned. Mm -hmm. These guys were brilliant, man. Mm -hmm. So this is what she's exposed to. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, every conversation in school, I always talk about that. There's no conversation right. at all. Life is the classroom mm -hmm. and every conversation in school. Right. Just the general conversations. It's just amazing how she just learned. And she's learning. She things. picked it up. She thought on her feet instantly dealing with these type of individuals mm -hmm. and she was young. How to leverage her position. Right. How to, and then as a female, there's always a challenge in this male-dominated right. world that you got to move extra careful, mm -hmm. and that's what you can do. And then, you know, growing up around my uncle Stan, he taught me a lot, and I watched a lot. Yeah, he talked a lot about Stan. So, I mean, Ooh, seeing around Lou and them, that was like 18, 19. I was hustling for Al around 6, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. So I kind of already knew the streets, you know what I'm saying, somewhat in dealing with what were you doing? What were you doing with Al? Um, selling dust. Okay. Yeah, he gave me some dust. I asked him for it, I believe. And, you know, just being grown. You ain't never tried with dust? Nah. Mm -mm. Was that typical for um a, a female back then? It was females probably older than me. I wouldn't say it was typical because, like you said, it was a male-dominated thing. But there were some women in Harlem that was getting millions of dollars. I mean, know? did you have to have a look? I mean, you know. I mean, have an attractive, an attractive look to be able to make money because I can not, imagine, you know, looking good. Oh yeah, I mean that helped. Just, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it helped. I'm sure, but there was some women that was, you know, I just, you know, somebody was just pointing some people out to me recently um, at a funeral for somebody that passed away, and they was pointing out the old hustlers, and it was like three women out there. Mm -hmm. Looking at them, you'll be like, well, really? But they was like, no. They were like running up on men. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, wow. The, wow. yeah. Right now, you know, they probably um, under the influence of, you know, whatever, because, you know, they're older, right. sickly. Right. And they said back then. They were um, major. And I was just standing there looking like, wow. wow. Yeah, major. So, you selling, so you selling dust, you learned a lot oh, yes, from, yeah. from Stan and from Al. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were really learning the streets hands on. So when you were going to deal with these other guys, you already had some G with the guys that you was in relationships yeah. with. Yeah. Lou, Lou was at that time, at that point, Lou was, he was gone. Yeah, I think he was a person. He was not in the picture. Yeah, not in the picture at all. I wasn't, he wasn't even a thought because I kind of like, kind of forgot all about him, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, until I seen him. So when did Lou realize that you was with Ace? <laughs> well, he knew I was getting the money from him, but okay. I told him I'll stop getting the money, you okay. know, because I feel, I'm like, okay, because it's probably, you feel disrespected. Right. You know, I'm cool. You know, right, 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 right. But, right, um, right. 
I'm sure, I'm sure it was always in the back of his head, like, you know, you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's giving my girl this money. He was upset. Yeah, I'm sure, but then again, I did buy you a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so be grateful. <laughs> you know, I didn't use it all for me. <laughs> you came up with still good with Kim. So, yes. okay, so now you get with Ace full time. What was life? What was life like? I get with Ace. With Big Ace from one twelve. I drop out of school. I just think money is just never going to stop. Because mm-hmm. I was in college, you mm-hmm. know. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, he moved me uptown. I had a choice to stay either downtown or uptown. Um, he gave me two cars. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of cars? Um, it was an Acura Legend. Nice. And mine was popping. And mine was hot. Gold with the indented trunk. Indented trunk? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the coupe or the four door? Not four door. Okay, four door. Those was hot back yeah. then. Mean, the gold trunk. So many people wanted to buy my Acura because of that trunk. It was ridiculous. I Ooh. was like, man, like, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. wasn't really into cars back then as much. Or? No, we like because me and my girlfriends, we always just driving, but we always had rented. Right. We had somebody older rent us cars all the time. Right. right. So you know, rent cars. Yeah, it was. was cars, you know, right, but yeah, yeah Acura a three twenty five BMW. Mm, he had a customized, like some customized van, mm-hmm. and then we had um, he had his bike, and then we had two three two three was a driver. Okay. Like, you know, whatever we. Cab That's how it was back in the day. All certain yeah. cabs did. Like we had double seven, so yeah. double seven, yeah. seven, <laughs> seven with, You know, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I wonder if a lot of those cabs were tapped, man. I've been thinking the back of a lot of things, <laughs> man. <laughs> Cause it was stuff we used to be like. It would have made sense. How the sense. hell did they, they know this? It, it would have made sense. sense. Cause a lot of people the got for it. Because a lot of people got for it. Those cabbies wasn't informed. In the old days, a lot of happened. Well, back then was a little different. Cause we had a lot of conversations in those cabs. Yeah. Back then was a little different. So let me read something from 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 the book. So you talked about the stuff that he got you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said it was like you had thirty thousand dollars in when the drawer he, just for emergency. So that's just thirty thousand dollars, and I want to talk a little more about the glitter, okay? Because we're gonna get to the darkness, but I want to talk about the glitter of the king, right? Thirty thousand uh, dollars, you know, in, in, in the drawer. You say y'all ain't gonna believe this shit, and I like when you curse too, because she kind of wrote. I figured like she talks, but uh, you just gotta read her book. She just curses fluently, right? You know, she's not like writing like Shakespeare or something. I know. So. Y'all ain't gonna believe this shit. We had a hawk too. A goddamn hawk that he had in his own apartment on 112 Street. Yeah. A hawk. hawk. Now, a hawk was and still is an endangered species, right? You know, she asks this question like, so oh my God, I didn't know black men hunted. I didn't know black men or any man had pet hawks. I know y'all like that dude was weird, but he wasn't. He was just different. Ace fed the hawk pigeons. Yo, yeah. <laughs> they took no one to throw pigeons in, the, in an apartment, son. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, because you can't be in there with it because it'll probably peck the yeah, yeah. hell out of you. But hawks and hawks yeah, are Yeah, a hawk is dangerous. Throw so pigeons in an apartment. They're big. They're big. God they're big. bless you. He was the only one that actually entered the apartment because I think the motherfucker was peck the shit out and kill you so he could go in. If he, the you know pigeon, pick but up. Yo, he or you, you if he asks yeah. me to, you know, yo, Link, go feed the pigeon, yeah. I mean, go feed the hawk, I couldn't just, I had to just open the door and lift him up from him, but he wouldn't bite oh, Ace. Shit, like, after Ace got locked up, even after he got locked up, I would pay people from his crew to go down there and feed the hawk. Like, I've never fed the hawk. Wow. Yeah, wow. Know. So, 21, at 21, I thought what I was doing pretty good for myself. Any chuck chick would have loved to be in my position at the time. I had everything a girl had ever wanted and needed. Mm-hmm. My only complaint was not seeing Ace as much as I wanted to. Right. So, mm, you know, there's that's always the game in the game. game. Yeah, that's that's so, mm-hmm. that's so, what's that like? Yeah, at that just, time. Yeah, at that time, I'm young. Okay, I got all this stuff. But then he's gone like all day. And maybe I see him maybe come in at like two, three in the morning. Mm. So after a while, I was like, okay, I could go out and have fun with my girls and spend some money. Right. But 
my man is not here. Mm -hmm. What is he doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's always going to be in the back of a female's mind. Right. right. So you started feeling a little empty. Yeah. And is he doing something out there that, you know, that he shouldn't be doing? Was your friends hating? Because you know sometimes females have a tendency of hating. Oh, especially yeah. when they see you got especially when they what see they, you got what they want. What they want. I mean, not that I felt anything at the time, you know, to be honest with you, because I shared everything. Gotcha. Oh, so you share you shared oh, everything. Oh, yeah, I mean friends. my cars or you know, anything. We just had fun. And yeah. then they had their little, you know, they had their guys too. So yeah. oh, there was enough guys for right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no. If she wasn't hanging with no style right? Right, nah, not at all. So we all. Yeah. Uh, She's still Yeah, she we. She was hanging with no chicken head. Was <laughs> hanging with no chicken head. <laughs> and there's enough. Listen, there wasn't a shortage of ballers making money. Not at all. No, it, it, listen. It, not at all. I don't care where you went. It wasn't as many cars and as many yeah. as Harlem. Yeah, yeah, it's Harlem. It just wasn't. And I love where I'm from. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm just making Queens. I live in the I love where I'm from. And where I'm from was popping. Yeah. Well, Harlem's all. Harlem's Harlem, son. Harlem. You know what I mean? You know what it is, what it is. Harlem's <laughs> Harlem. And that's why everybody went out there. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the life that you saw going on in Harlem wasn't all originated. From there, like some of those cars you saw mm -hmm. was from guys right. from out of town, mm -hmm. guys from other boroughs, right. because everybody yeah. went there. And you could even so tell I give you the perception that you see a car go by, oh, these Harlem niggas getting, you know, that car could be from the Bronx. Right, because everybody came to Harlem. But if you, you, could even, you could even tell. And you can't say that for no other borough. Some of everybody came Some of like, the hip, but some of the hip hop heads, the rappers like Cameron and stuff like that, they, they from Harlem. You can even tell like well, what they do, they keep the legacy right. going. Mm -hmm. When they have cars, they, they have these cars like some weird looking colors, like Cameron got around with the pink. Or even how they dress. And how they dress. Well, like, see, they still hold on to the legacy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You hear Dave Dash dress like all the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, about the same, these same guys. Yeah. You know, all of us Harlem. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, you with him, you got all the stuff that you need. Right. Um, and what? You're doing well. And, um, you know, just another question too before we take a break and then we're gonna. What's going on now around that time? I mean, so things start to get a little shaky. Tell me what begins to happen. Well, hmm. There's a few things that happen with some other guys down on 12th Street, you know, then I end up uh, found out I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and then... Fritz he, is sick. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's sick. Um, what was he actually suffering from? What was actually his ailment? AIDS. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he got that from a blood transfusion, I think back in the... Late 70s or maybe early 80s. I think he got shot, and if I'm not mistaken, um, he got a blood transfusion, and I believe that's what it was. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. But at the time, you know, like when I met him, he was fine. Old. He was good. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, um, Ace told me a story about when he was sick, and Ace had brought a doctor up here to make him well again. Mm -hmm. So he was good. Ace you know? was one of the guys that yeah. really took care of it. He loved him. Like, yeah. He. To this day, like he'll probably cry talking about him. Right. I think somebody got a video. It's a video of him on YouTube somewhere talking to right. eight sisters. They did, but yeah, he definitely that was his mentor. Okay, that was a guy who was there for him when he had an issue on the east side, and he ended up, you know, coming and getting down with Fritz and you know doing what they did. So yeah, he um, that was a real friendship and somebody who really cared for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Ace gets arrested. Yeah, that was like one of the worst days of my life. I'm like, okay, he gets arrested. And then he called me and said it was from like three years prior, something had happened. And I'm just looking like, hmm, okay, so what we going to do? It was we a had murder. Money. It was a murder okay. of a, a cab driver, a Spanish cab driver. So, okay. Sounds bogus. You know, but you know, just never know. Um, I mean, getting the money they were getting. 
I mean, I understand what's right. trying to happen and, 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 with that problem. Right, right, that, that's what I said. But they're trying to frame, they're probably trying to frame him for something. I figured that somebody was definitely trying to frame him because, you know, of course he had like enemies on the east side because of jealousy. Mm-hmm. So that was always in my head that, okay, somebody's framing him. Like, mm-hmm. he didn't do this. He didn't need to kill a cab driver. Right, right. <laughs> you know? All the money they were making. Right, Jesus. right. So, um, that's what I thought. But, you know, our thing was, okay, we got money. We're going to get these lawyers, and that's going to be it. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. But um, the justice system, I, I just don't know. You know, when you have, like, I had somebody later on, years later, look at his case for me. Okay. And they was like, he would have never got convicted or even maybe arrested off of a one witness, you know, some crackhead lady saying that she saw something out the window. Mm-hmm. While smoking crack, you yeah, know. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so back then it was just as corrupted. Oh, uh, it was. Oh, the twenty fifth precinct was corrupt, and I lived next door to the precinct that was called the Dirty Thirty. Me and Ace had an apartment right next mm-hmm. door, so yeah, they was definitely mm-hmm. corrupt. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just really, you know, me being young and pregnant. It was just like how many I, months were you around this time? Um, I think it was about four months. Okay. Yeah, three to four months, and at that time I was like, "What should I do? You know, do I need to? You know, should I be becoming a mother? Is he coming back? You know, I'm trying to play it right. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about that. Economically, yeah. what's it gonna be like? Is the money still yeah. gonna be coming in? And right. then I'm like, okay, his business. So I ended up having to take over the business, you know, I wasn't new to it. Right. So I was okay doing it. And at the end of the day, I need to protect my money. Right, right. So that's what my mindset was. Mm-hmm. And, um. So the people that's working for him. Yeah. So you had, had an idea him. of yeah. how much was out there, who mm-hmm. he did all for packages. Yeah, he told me that. that and other, like he had his little crew that was doing anything. And then there were other guys that he dealt with. Gotcha. So it was just really money all over the place wow. and I was pulling up <laughs> you know and you was doing this on your own on my own with a, with a baby and stuff yeah okay so we, we're gonna we're gonna take a, a, a short break and then we're gonna get into what ultimately uh, happens with Ace and then go to the rest of your story because it's, it's about to get juicy it's about, it's about to get we'll be right back conversations with Malik let's pay some bills yeah <laughs> wow it's just one of something you got a